What's going on guys? Today I am going to be giving eight first impressions. Now these are not reviews, but they are first impressions of knives from Spider Cokes, QSP, Civivi, Boker, BRS, CJRB. So these eight knives are knives that you're probably going to want to see, at least most of them. At the end of the video, I'm curious which one you would choose. And we're going to start it with the Civivi Mini Sandbar. Now this knife is actually kind of cool, despite it not really hitting the spot for me. What makes it cool is that they did something a little bit different with this blade shape, and it's actually extremely aggressive. You have this recurve going here, and then this, they, they're calling it a Tanto, but it's only because you have this recurve into his Japanese style Tanto. It's more of a drop point with the recurve in it, in my opinion. We have this really aggressive swedge with almost a clip point coming on back here. There's a lot. It's hard to describe this blade. But this is a Nitro V blade steel, and that's pretty cool. I believe this knife was coming in around 60 bucks plus or minus. These are micarta scales with the titanium pocket clip. A micarta backspacer with a lanyard loop. T8 screws all around, which is really, really nice. Some heavy milling on the liners in typical Civivi fashion and the action is pretty damn snappy. This is an Eric Oaks design in hand. It's your typical small, <laughs> it's not really an aggressive small knife because that's not too typical, but this is your typical knife with an aggressive tint to it. And <clears throat> I think it's gonna be really useful actually because if you've used a recurve, you probably like using it. You probably just hate sharpening it. And this is probably not gonna be much difference. It's it's going to be a pain in the ass to sharpen, but in use, you have your puncture style tasks and your draw cutting. I think the design is interesting. It's not for me, though. Now, one that is definitely for me is this QSP Otter. This thing is so dang cool. It has this blackened stone wash or a black wash finish on the blade. This is your kind of sheep's foot style, traditional sheep's foot, too. It kind of sticks true to that name. With the flat grind that comes up here with an S35 VN blade, we have this really beautiful carbon fiber with copper in these scales, and ah, it just looks really, really cool. A complaint that I might have outright is that this thing's just a little bit too thick. That's okay, it's not a huge deal, it feels comfortable in hand, but they could have thinned it up just a little bit, maybe tried to recess those liners or something. Two standoffs there with a lanyard hole right there. We do have a titanium pocket clip that is milled and it looks pretty cool. You see it there. These screws are going to be T6. This is going to be a T8 for the pivot. We have ball bearings and the action is pretty good. The access to the liner might be a little bit difficult, but as you can see here, they did cut out just a little bit for you. This knife was coming in at around 130 bucks, and you guys already know I'm a QSP fanboy, and this, you know, I guess I didn't know it was going to be as small, and then I grabbed it for another couple minutes. I've only held each one of these knives for about maybe 5 to 10 minutes before making this video, so these are true first impressions and my first thoughts. And after holding it for about five to 10 minutes, I kind of like the size. This is kind of that gentlemanly, almost your CJRB Rhea style knife. Maybe slightly bigger than the Rhea. As I said, action, pretty damn good, pretty snappy. You can reverse flick it off the blade, which is really cool. And it makes it for a fidget toy as well. Sticking with the theme of QSP, we have the QSP Hamster. Now I've been eyeing this knife for I can't tell you how long, but I never realized it was as small as it is. <laughs> Here it is next to the pair of three. Sticking true to its name, the hamster is quite small, and I've been thinking this would actually be a really cool fifth pocket knife. And it has this nice sheep's foot style blade again, maybe a drop point, but in my opinion, kind of closer to a sheep's foot, maybe even a spear point. The titanium is milled oh so beautifully for being a small piece. You have this going on here all these lines and then some chamfering or heavy chamfering going on down the sides a little bit of scalloping to access this lock bar a titanium pocket clip that does kind of match the design almost looks like a hamster tail stainless steel lock bar insert milling on the inside of the titanium and then you have the lanyard hole down here 
which doesn't really interfere with anything because it kicks out anymore. And actually, what it does is it gives a spot if you're going to try to get some extra fingers on there. That's what that's going to do for you. This is an S35 VN blade, and I do believe this was coming in, again, at about 140 bucks. You can see me failing this here, which leads into one of my very first complaints I've ever had about QSP is this action. And I'm going to give you guys uh, audio of this, so... I don't know if you guys could hear that, that was extremely gritty, and that is the detent ball riding on the face of the blade. I don't know if it's the detent ball or the blade tang itself. So I'm gonna take this thing apart in another video, we're gonna clean that up, and I'm almost positive I can fix this. You shouldn't have to, but you can. All in all, this is a pretty cool little blade. I, it, It's good for a fifth pocket knife. One of my favorite fifth pocket knives is the Kershaw Launch 11. And as you can see, it's just about that same size. Now, for an automatic, this is the perfect size because you don't have to fidget with trying to get it open. We're already seeing with the QSP hamster, it's kind of difficult. Now, once I clean up that action, it may be different, but as it stands right now, this is this is not 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 good out of the box. And that's not indicative of QSP overall. It's just this one instance. And I can say that from personal experience because as you guys know, I'm a QSP fanboy. I love my QSP Puffin, love the Legatus, loved everything from QSP really. And all of these have broken in oh so nice and none of them have had this grit. It's gonna be a fun video to try and fix this. Going from the small to the big and that is the CJRB Caldera. Now this thing is kind of what I wish the Kaiser Roach would be. If you could tell by the blade, it looks a lot like the Kaiser Roach. Very, very thin, very just full flat grind this whole way. It, it looks like a slicing monster. I haven't had it in use yet. Again, you know, first impressions. The action is a little stiff, but I guarantee it's gonna break in because you move the lock bar and it wants to fall right away. So it's just gonna take some breaking in on whatever type of coating this is on this AR RPM 9 blade steel. This is G10 with the G10 inlay, red G10 with the aluminum pivot, I believe, and an aluminum backspacer. In hand, the non-choked up position, this is one of those first times I'm gonna say it, feels pretty damn good. The choked up position feels pretty good. The hammer grip feels pretty dang good. I'm really impressed with this knife. This is one of those first big ones in a while from CJRB or Civivi that I've really, really enjoyed. And I'm going to enjoy kind of getting uh, more acquainted with it, if you will. There is some milling on the inside. Uh, not as heavy as what Civivi would do, but, you know, it's still some milling to alleviate some weight. And I can tell you, it's not the heaviest. But where this thing just, I feel like, is going to be a performing monster. It's such a damn good design as far as in hand and the blade shape i'm really excited about this one this one came in at around 50 or 60 bucks let's jump to some spider coats and i'm going to pull both of these out at the same time because i bought them both together and on purpose this one is the spider coat efficient and this one is the spider coat persistence now i wanted to get them both in frn or both in g10 but I ended up just doing it this way because I don't know that I could find the efficient in FRN. I, I don't know if I looked that hard, but what I was really doing was comparing the sizes of the blade. I wanted to do a little series on knives that you may be considering and you may be torn between. So I'm gonna be doing that as time goes on. Plus I really wanted to check these out. First, looking at the Spyderco Persistence, it does have a striking resemblance to the Spyderco Tenacious. In fact, it is damn near the same knife if you were to cut off about an inch and a half, both from the handle and the blade. In hand, in typical Spyderco fashion, you are pushed a little bit further back where you can see that the pommel of this is actually butted up against my palm, and you're kind of driving more forward with this knife as opposed to driving through. You can still drive through, but it's just the position of this with that shortened handle kind of creates that situation. At first, I didn't like it, but now that I've been kind of handling it, I may actually like this quite a bit. This is FRN with 8 CR13 MOV steel. Want, want. Spyderco, come on, get your uh, budget steels in line. 
but this does have stainless steel liners that are milled and it doesn't feel heavy at all. This feels like one of those little knives that's kind of practical and realistic for everyday use for somebody who might make two or three cuts a day. The Spider Coefficient, on the other hand, and yes, the G10 makes it feel a little bit more sturdy. It makes it feel, I would say, the persistence feels a little bit more like a tool that you're going to toss around, whereas the Efficient feels more like a tool that you're going to take a little bit more pride in. Now, this kind of sticks with the Native series. It almost reminds me of a Shaman in hand. I've never felt the Native 5. That's on the list. <laughs> it's like one of the few Spider Co's that I haven't actually felt. But this thing feels amazing in hand. Again, made in China. They're both made in China. This is the 8CR13 MOV blade steel. We got some G10 with the stainless steel backspacer and some milling on these liners. I think it's a little much, but it does feel kind of overbuilt for Spyderco, giving it that real solid feeling. This one does come with the wire pocket clip, and this is one of the first wire pocket clip positions that I'm actually enjoying in hand just a little bit. Both of these have excellent cutting geometry, so even though it's 8CR13 MOV, they're actually going to perform quite well, and that edge is going to last a little bit longer. It's not going to be as tough, but compared to other 8CR13 MOV blades, you're probably going to find this a little bit more uh, long-lasting than the others. Again, both are liner locks, and really, I just wanted to get them both and compare them, and so far... It's kind of hard because I like them both for different reasons, despite being kind of the same thing. Really, the only major difference is the forward finger choil cutout in the frame here, typical Spyderco fashion. And then in tenacious fashion, you have this really upswept ramp going on there with no forward finger choil. If you had a forward finger choil, that ramp wouldn't make too much sense. So this is kind of like the mini tenacious, aka the persistence. Get it? They're sticking with a the theme there. And then we have the efficient. Both of these are cool. I'm excited to kind of talk about both of these in reviews, doing comparisons with these. And these are just really cool beater knives for 50 or 60 bucks that yes, it's 8CR13 MOV, but where they lack in the blade steel, their cutting geometry definitely makes up for it. And some may argue that the cutting geometry kind of matters more than the blade steel when in actual use. Second to last, we have one that is from Boker. Now I've had my eyes on Boker a little bit more because if you look through their models, they have some pretty cool stuff. And you just kind of, it's one of those you got to give them a chance, right? So in this particular instance, I ended up checking this out. And I think this is the Boker Connector, I think is the name of it. And it's about 130 bucks for S35VN, a titanium frame lock, kind of a wimpy looking pocket clip. And just a really cool overall blade shape. It's real stabby, real small. Kind of reminds me of the Protec Newport, as you can see here. Very, very similar in design and blade shapes, at least. I mean, even the grind is so similar on the two of them. Aesthetics are what drew me to this, and that's almost where it stops. I do believe this is on ball bearings, and the thumb discs work just fine as I failed three times, but I am in gloves, so that's, that's my excuse there. In gloves, it's going to be a little bit harder. There we go. See if we can reverse flick it. I can without the gloves, guys. It's just that with these things, it's a little bit more difficult. And I have been wearing the gloves more because I have a skin thing going on that isn't going to resolve itself ever. And uh, so we're just going to keep you guys from the nails in the hand. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to access some of these. Now, this has no milling on the inside. It's just two slabs of titanium. The titanium actually has this chalky feel, which I'm not a fan of. I... I sometimes don't mind it, but in this particular instance, I don't like it at all. It feels kind of just gritty and almost cheap. This blade itself is a pretty cool blade shape, and the S35VN for 130 bucks is a good thing. I do like that about it. The action is okay. It'll probably break in really, really well, but that might be as far as it goes. So this one is a conundrum for me because I still really want to like it, it just hasn't hit that mark yet. Overall, I mean, it's a very solid construction. The design seems pretty cool. It's just some of the choices that they made I'm not sure I'm a fan of. This last one, I hate to end this on a negative note for something so highly anticipated by myself, but we're gonna do it. This is the BRS Apache. Now this knife is a button lock, part of this whole button lock fad craze that everybody's been a part of, everybody's excited to experience. And I saw this, and Jake and I, from Jake from Ohio State, we were talking about it, and it looks great. 
There's a lot of really cool things about this. Hey, this thing has no freaking liners. This is just a thick slab of G10. Pretty cool. Button lock. Pretty cool. Action, not bad. But wait, this isn't the gloves, guys. That is extremely difficult to break that detent. You can do it with the thumb pretty easy. The flipper, you can feel it. You can just feel it. It just, there's something in it that barely wants to go. So this might be one that I take apart and take a look at, see if we can fix it. But I can tell you, there's a lot of detent lash going on here. And that's not a cool thing. Not to mention, this has a really, really cool aesthetic. But it's just a little bit too small for me. As you can see, compared there to the Para 3. And when in hand, this is one of those that falls into that middle zone, which is kind of like the black hole. I don't want a knife that I really can't get a full grip on if you're still trying to be like a little big knife. The Kershaw Launch 10 and the QSP Hamster are both these tiny little guys and they're not trying to be anything more than something tiny except for this one doesn't want to open. As you can see, it is much smaller and much more, I don't want to say practical, but it's not going to try to say, hey, do you want to get a full grip on me but you can't? No. It's, you're, you know that you're not getting a full grip on this knife. This one, you kind of think you are, and there's no room for the pinky, even with narrow fingers. The action on it's pretty damn cool. It's just, I, I mean, I guess the action with the button lock is cool, right? It works just fine if it was just a button lock. But the other opening methods and breaking that detent kind of suck. There is no back and forth, no up and down. And as I said, there is a little bit of detent lash. Overall, the design of this knife looks awesome. You add a little bit to the handle and a little bit to that blade. I don't even know if there's a larger version, but a larger version would make sense. Add an inch, half inch on either side. I think that would make a whole hell of a lot of sense. It is ambidextrous, and that's cool, I guess. The deep carry pocket clip is there, but I think the, one of the coolest things about this are the aesthetics and the fact that it has G10 with no liners. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Other than that, you really got to fix this action at breaking that detent. It may wear in, but it may not. So we're going to open it up and check it out and see what's really making this thing tick. Even if we fix it, this detent lash probably isn't going to go away, and that's going to drive me nuts. This is a D2 blade for 50 or 60 bucks. And before I started this video, I was going to kind of rag and say D2 is kind of whatever. Like, why do we have that? But I just said pretty good things about the Spyderco and 8 CR13. So I don't think I have a place to say that about D2. Last, you can check out this black wash finish. I was kind of looking at it, realized I didn't mention it. It does look pretty cool. This blade shape looks pretty cool. As I said, this design is cool, but it missed the mark. So we gave our impressions on some knives that we absolutely loved. Some that we're on the fence about, and they kind of grow on you, kind of don't. And then some that need some work that we may be able to fix ourselves, but they did have issues from the get-go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, guys.